I declare these proceedings of the 73rd commencement of Utah Valley University to be in session. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors by the UVU ROTC Color Guard and the national anthem performed by Re Rebecca Rosari from Payson, Utah, who is graduating tonight with a bachelor's degree in music. Thank you, and please be seated. Welcome to Utah Valley University's 73rd commencement ceremony. This evening, we gather to recognize our students, as well as family members, friends, community members, and invited guests in the culminating event of the academic year. We are proud to honor the dedication and commitment of UVU's 2014 graduating class in completing degrees that span a broad array of scholarly disciplines. It's a pleasure to share this celebratory moment with you. This evening, we are honored to be joined by several distinguished guests. Our proceedings will include remarks from Wes Moore, a respected youth advocate, best-selling author, an Army combat veteran. We will confer honorary degrees on Mr. Moore as well as friends of UVU, Barbara Barrington-Jones, 
Christopher Folk, and Noel Picus Pace, who will be introduced later in the program. At this point, I would like to acknowledge the presence of other noted guests in attendance, including educational and civic leaders from across the state. I will introduce each platform guest and ask them to stand briefly as their names are at read. I also ask that we hold our applause until all of the guests have been introduced. With us from the Office of, Governor, from the, Office of the Governor is the Honorable G Governor Gary Herbert. With us from the Utah State Legislature is Senator Stephen Urquhart. With us from the State Board of Regents are Regent Vice Chair Dan Campbell, Wilford Clyde, James Evans, who is also on the State Board of Education, and Jack Zanger. With us from the UVU Board of Trustees are Chair Stephen Lund, Vice Chair Elaine Dalton, Karen Acerson, Student Body President Bradley Jonathan Andrews, Alumni Association President Curtis Blair, Greg Butterfield, and James Clark. Representing the Utah System of Higher Education is Associate Commissioner Greg Stauffer. With us from the State Board of Education is Jefferson Moss. Representing the cities of Orem and Provo are Richard Brunst, Mayor of Orem, and John Curtis, Mayor of Provo. From the UVU Cabinet, we have Ian Wilson, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Mark Archambault, Vice President for Development and Alumni, Linda Macon, Vice President for Planning, Budget, and Human Resources, Cameron Martin, President for University Relations, Vice President for University Relations, Val Peterson, Vice President for Finance and Administration, and Michelle Taylor, Vice President of Student Affairs. The deans joining us this evening are Wayne Dornan, College of Aviation and Public uh, Ser Services, David Yells, College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Daniel Fairbanks, College of Science and Health, Michael Savoy, College of Technology and Computing, Kay Newell Daly, School of the Arts, Parker Fossen, School of Education, Katie Taylor, University College, Norm Wright, Woodbury School of Business. Also with us are Shad Sorensen, Dean of Students, and Kyle Reyes, Special Assistant to the President. Finally, UVU's tremendous faculty is represented tonight by Faculty Senate President David Conley. UVU is a teaching institution and therefore only as strong as its faculty. The exceptional instruction they provide is a reflection of the institution's commitment to educational excellence. We're delighted to have so many of our faculty join us here tonight. To represent our staff, we have with us Brett McKechnie, President of the Professional Association of Campus Employees. Our staff members play an integral role in the cultivation of a learning environment that fosters student success. On that note, I would like to ask all UVU faculty and staff here tonight to please rise now and be recognized as we recognize all who have been uh, honored on the platform this evening. We will now have the opportunity to hear from John O'Andros, President of the UVU Student Association for the 2013-14 academic year. John O. from Kaysville, Utah, is graduating tonight with a Bachelor of Science in Marketing and a minor in Business Management. This year, he presided over one of the most diverse student councils in the history of UVU and did so with steadfast commitment to collaboration and efficiency. He was actively engaged in the historic opening of the Student Life and Wellness Center and thoughtfully represented the student voice throughout the process. Indeed, he was instrumental in revising the student fee policy and supported fee reallocation to minimize the student fee increase. In an impressive effort to increase engagement with the student body, he advocated for the extended election cycle to give students more opportunities to understand pl candidate platforms and increase voter participation. It is my pleasure to now invite President Andrews to share his remarks. Congratulations, everyone. We made it. As a representative of this incredible student body here at Utah Valley University, I would like to humbly say thank you to all those who made it possible for us to be here. 
our loving faculty, our hardworking staff, the administration, and most importantly, our families and loved ones. Thank you to the ones who were with us long in the nights of the study groups that seemed to never end until we rewarded ourselves with the famous pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Thank you to the ones who took our pic or panic phone calls 30 minutes before class, asking if we had paper due that day. Thank you to the ones who reassured us that the world was not going to end because we failed one of Shiley's anatomy tests. Thank you to, thank you for your love, your encouragement, and for your support. In 1941, the United States was in, is in the middle of a global dispute. President Franklin D. Roosevelt was trying to get the national economy running again, getting supplies to the Allied troops across the seas, and defending the United States from global threats. The same year, in Provo, Utah, a little school was founded called Central Utah Vocational. It was founded based on the principle that students could learn real-world skills and trades and use them to build a better tomorrow. Looking at Utah Valley today, we have grown larger than perhaps anyone could have possibly envisioned in 73 years. What makes, growth, what's, what makes that growth even more special is we haven't really changed our mission since those early days in Central Utah Vocational. We are still an engaged institution. We still take what we learned in the classroom out into the real world so that we can make a better tomorrow. This year, we have seen many amazing things happen across campus. We started with the groundbreaking of the 240,000 square foot classroom building, announcing our Division I men's soccer team, and having the largest freshman convocation in school history. We watched the world while cheering on our very own Wolverines in the Winter Olympics in Sochi. We supported our men's basketball team in the stands as they fought to win the WAC championship. Our multicultural student council formed and grew creating an inclusivity strategy for across the campus. The Wheat Care Center opened and is currently giving new opportunities to students who come to school with small children. New programs initiated for us to participate in global service projects. We received his historic state funding that is so vital for us to continue our growth and has continued, and we also opened our doors to the Student Life and Wellness Building. In addition to campus that will affect Wolverines for years to come. Students, faculty, staff, and administration all played part in all these accomplishments this past year. During my final weeks here at UVU, I spent time asking some of our fellow graduates about their experiences here as Wolverines. UVU has been as much of a life-altering experience for them as it has for me. Mother of five, Elizabeth Jarema, a Fijian native and behavioral science study graduate, said, without my experience here at UVU, I would not be able to be confident in my future success in the world. I pay, tribute, I pay tribute to UVU for the person I have become and the many things I can now accomplish because of my experiences. Thank you to all of those who have met, mentored me and shown me the way to success. Thank you for opening up my mind to a new understanding about life. Jared Roberts, a husband, father of one, member of the National Guard and a biology graduate said, UVU is home. I thought I would, I thought I would come here after basic training, earn my degree and get out, of, get out and start living life. But since starting here five years ago, I now realize that the person I am today is because of UVU in more ways than just the classroom experience. Being involved here has transformed me into something I thought I could never become. I started here as a family studies major so that I could become a family therapist. But after taking my freshman biology class, it was a life-changing experience to see where I, that I could fall in love with something so quickly. I switched majors to biology I thought science was cool before, but I never thought I could actually make a career out of it. But that all changed here at UVU and has continued to grow because of the amazing faculty of the College of Science and Health. Liz Miller, an aviation graduate, said, I once thought I could be just as happy at another university, but that isn't true. UVU is special to me, mostly because I have experienced things that I never expected to have nor dream of having. When I first came here at UVU as an 18-year-old freshman, all I cared about was flying planes. Once I saw the entire campus, I fell in love. I am so glad I was pushed to be involved. We all have different stories that led us here to this amazing institution. My story actually started when I was three years old, playing with a little Spider-Man toy. I slipped off the stool and cracked the back of my skull. After a few stitches, I was good as new, or at least I thought. School never came easy to me. Every year, teachers were confused, questioning why my reading was so poor, why my ability to comprehend was off the charts. 
My parents were invested in me and spent thousands of costly hours of reading specialists, but wasn't getting any better. My parents later told me that late at night when they were talking, they worried that I would never be able to go to college. They hoped that I could learn a trade, make a great career out of it. They continued to support me and give me every opportunity they could so that I would, be, so I would succeed. I remember my mother read me F. Scott Fitzgerald's Great Gatsby to me in my 10th grade year because I had a book report due the next week in English. But if she wouldn't have had to help me read it, I would have never been able to finish the book in time. This was not the first time that she had to help me read, but through hearing the story out loud, I could comprehend it just as well as anyone else. I graduated from high school with a 3.2 GPA, but my ACT score was a 17. I couldn't figure out why my test testing taking abilities were so bad. I had friends getting accepted into universities all over the country. When, I when they asked me where I was going, I said Utah Valley State College. I would tell people that I was going to UVSC for the lacrosse team, but in all honesty, it was the only place that would accept me for my abilities and give me a chance to become the best me. I enrolled at UVSC in 2007. Classes, I made the leap into the college world. I still vividly remember the day I was sitting in my Psychology 1010 class, listening to my professor lecture about learning disabilities. He talked about dyslexia. Hearing about the symptoms of this specific disability, it clicked. That's what I have. It all makes sense now. I said, <clears throat> I called my parents later and told them about what was going on. They found a neuroscientist doctor in Salt Lake that treated me and helped me to re uh, retrain my brain. I share my story only to show you an end result of what this institution can, can create. Here, there are opportunities for everyone with a desire to learn, to engage in a serious education, and make a difference in their own lives and the world around them. I started here as a poli-sci history major because the faculty teaching it had such an infectious love of what they taught. Dr. David Wilson was my first history professor, and he, he challenged each one of us to start thinking outside the box. He pushed us to learn the cultures here before the early settlers. Professor Neil Maxfield was my first intro to marketing professor. And through his passion, I was able to see the cre creativity in business. I switched my majors to marketing and became invested in the American Marketing Association Club on campus. Professor Paige Gardner and Dr. Stephen Huff were my next inspiring faculty, who again challenged my thinking and pushed me to become more than what I thought I could be. Finally, there was Dr. Kevin Rhodes. Through his lectures, I was able to see where I wanted to be in business. Each one of these faculty members made it, my time here as a student more exciting, thought-provoking, and worth it. I know there are others here today who, had a, who have had a similar experience with other incredible faculty on campus. We thank these incredible faculty members for loving your jobs and loving us. UVU has been great to me. I will miss walking in the hallways every day saying hello to familiar faces. I will miss sitting in class discussing theory and reporting on our hands-on experiences. And most importantly, I will miss the exciting energy felt here. This place is home for many people, including me. I am always and will be forever a proud Wolverine. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jono, for your words, your passionate example, your dedication to students. At this point, I would like to introduce a few more of our exemplary students. Seated on the front row tonight are UVU's valedictorians for 2014. These 14 students have distinguished themselves through high academic achievement and have been selected to represent their respective college or school, which may name a valedictorian at the baccalaureate or associate degree level or one of each. You will find in your program more information about these extraordinary individuals. Now, I want to introduce them and ask each to stand as I read their name. Once again, please hold your applause until all have been acknowledged. Carson, Carson Sharp, who will receive a Bachelor of Science degree in Aviation Science, and Aaron Arneson, who will receive an Associate in Applied Science degree in Emergency Services, are representing the College of Aviation and Public Services. Representing the College of Humanities and Social Sciences are Peter Sundwall, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Behavioral Science, and Chelsea Hicken, who is receiving an Associate in Science degree in Integrated Studies. Sherry Casey, Bachelor of Science in Exercise Science and Outdoor Recreation, and Amanda Beeman, Associate in Science in Nursing, 
represent the College of Science and Health. Representing the College of Technology and, Compu and Computing are Dustin Lewis, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Software Engineering, and Mark Perry, who is receiving an Associate in Applied Science degree in Collision Repair Technology. From the School of the Arts, we have Wolfgang Jaeger, Bachelor of Arts in Music and Bachelor of Music in Performance, and Jenilyn Je Jessup, Associate in Applied Science in Art and Visual Com Communications. Suzanne Allen, who will receive a Bachelor of Science degree in Elementary Education, is representing the School of Education. Allison Jolly, who is receiving an Associate degree in Science uh, associate in Science degree in University Studies is representing University College. Finally, representing the Woodbury School of Business are Katharina Parker with a Bachelor of Science degree in Accounting and Cody Anderson with an Associate in Science degree in Business Management. Please join me in a round of applause for our valedictorians and the rest of UVU's outstanding graduates. Today, the graduating class of 2014 becomes a new generation of UVU alumni. With that in mind, we are now privileged to hear a few words from Curtis Blair, president of the UVU Alumni Association and a member of the UVU Board of Trustees. Immediately following Curtis's remarks, the UVU Wind Symphony will perform Symphonic Dance Number no. 3 Fiesta by Clifton Williams. Hello graduates, it's an honor to be with you this evening. One of the most famous icons in the world was sculpted in 1911 by Charles Robinson Sykes. You have seen this sculpture in the movies, some of you have uh, seen one in person, and if you're really lucky, you have driven a vehicle with this ornament fixed uh, to the hood of this car. The sculpture is called The Spirit of Ecstasy and it is the hallmark symbol of Rolls-Royce vehicles around the world. The artist was commissioned to capture the essence of courage and confidence, and did so by sculpting the form of a woman leaning forward with her arms stretched behind and above her. A billowing cloth is pressed against her by the wind, and as she holds it in her fingertips, the cloth resembles wings. However, Confidence and courage are not the same thing. Confidence springs from ability. Courage springs from identity. And the energizing fluid of both courage uh, and confidence is audacity. May each of you go forward with a commitment to be confident and courageous. Commitment looks exactly like courage when you're committed to something more than your fears. So be bold, be confident, be courageous. Wherefore, I have the opportunity to induct you as formal UVU alumni and as the duly appointed president of the Utah Valley University Alumni Association. I charge you the graduating class of 2014 to uphold the values celebrated in the mission of this institution from which you have received your higher education. Therefore, I charge you to go forth from this ceremony as people of integrity, as lifelong learners, and as stewards of our globally interdependent community. Having prepared you to accept these responsibilities, I invite you to signify your willingness to uphold these values by each of you announcing audibly, I will, to our assembly in response to the following question. Graduates, will you accept these responsibilities? I will. Very good. Therefore, this first day of May, 2014, I invoke my authority as president of the Utah Valley University Alumni Association and officially declare that you are alumni of Utah Valley University and will join with those who have preceded you together with 198,000 graduates and the largest graduating class of 5,522 
we recognize you as our newest UVU alumni, Wolverines. I might also make a note here of accomplishment. Of this year's graduating class, 844 students, that represents 16% of you, have given generously or pledged more than $11,000 to support scholarships for our other rising students, and that is quite an accomplishment. You deserve a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, thank you, Curtis, for your encouraging words, and to the UVU Wind Symphony for that spectacular number. Uh, another round of applause, please. That was. Well, let me say what I've wanted to say all night to our uh, most honored uh, guest tonight, you students. This is a very moving sight. There you are, so elegantly clad in cap and gown, looking bright and beautiful and handsome. Treasure those robes. Take it from me. Take it from your esteemed faculty who are here in great numbers to support you tonight. Take it from the honored guests on the stand. Take a good, hard look at all of us and recognize that that robe you're wearing is likely the only thing, the only thing that you have today that in 20 or 30 years will still fit you. <laughs> Graduation is always my favorite day of the academic year, but I have to say that this commencement year has a special feeling of optimism and power to it, unlike any other I've participated in. And it starts with you, a record-setting number of graduates, 5,258 to be precise. To put this in perspective, 5,258 is roughly the same number of games the Jazz have lost this season. And it's just under half the number of text messages each of you will send during my brief remarks. <laughs> More seriously, this is a 12% jump from last year. What a tremendous indicator this is of UVU's continuing and spectacular rise as an institution of higher learning. We have so many things to be proud of this year. Our people and programs are just flourishing. Numerous faculty members have been recognized by state, regional and national organizations for their accomplishments in the classroom and fields of study. Placements in professional and graduate schools are strong and increasing. Numerous guest speakers, creative works, and faculty engagements have been absolutely superb this year. And multiple programs from aviation to athletics and a host of departments in between have sent teams of students off to regional and even national competitions where they did not just perform well, but took home the very top honors. This is to say nothing of the exciting infrastructure developments of the year, like a gleaming new We Care Center and a large student life and wellness center. But in all this, I digress. The most exciting and promising indicator yet of UVU's greatness is you. All 5,258 of you, please. You came here and you now leave here with a degree, that special mark of one trained broadly in the foundational subjects of science, math, English, and history, to name just a few, while giving you even more advanced training in a focused field from biotech to philosophy. This is also the first year I can look out and see graduates who've earned our new Engaged Learning University distinction. In an effort to make good on our pledge to graduate students with a diploma and a resume, this honor gives university-level recognition to students for sustained achievements in the areas of service learning, leadership, and professional engagement. So yes, as notable as shiny new buildings, star faculty, and award-winning programs are, it is your success today that best signals UVU is doing what it was built to do and with a sweep and quality like few other schools across the country. Now, with that said, in addition to sharing just one thought of counsel with you, I wish to take a moment of recognition here for something that will have a profound and lasting effect on this institution and upon each of you, even if you are not here to reap the immediate benefit. In recent years, UVU has experienced significant growth in the midst of fairly turbulent economic challenges. To address this, we have worked long and hard each year with our legislators to still make substantial investments in this dynamic institution. 
Upon earning university status six years ago, UVU received an infusion of additional base funding support and a beautiful new library. Since then, we have been given support for building the most state-of-the-art science building in Utah and a very large classroom building still under construction. Such investments have already proved crucial in providing opportunities for success for students like each of you and the thousands and thousands who will follow in your wake. While we are immensely grateful for this support in years past, I must also acknowledge that such support simply has not been able to keep full pace with the stunning growth of this institution. Now, in finding ways to take on this growth while providing a solid array of high-quality programs without commensurate public funding, we have flourished into the present, as my opening comments highlighted. But the truth of the matter is that we have gotten so dangerously lean, much more so than most other schools, that the promise of continued growth and excellence into the future look to be an absolute impossibility. What we have accomplished thus far has been remarkable, but it was clearly not sustainable. Fortunately, something extraordinary happened this legislative session. A coalition of public leaders banded together determined to address the fairly significant funding inequities that had developed at several of the most rapidly growing institutions of higher learning in the state. Despite the fact that state revenues were lower than expected this year, these leaders found a way to redress this issue and do it without raising taxes. The result for UVU was $24 million of new ongoing operational money. To put this in historical terms, this infusion of public support is more than the previous nine years of state funding for UVU combined. The immediate and long-term implications of this for the growth and vitality of UVU are hard to overestimate. In honor of this singular effort, I would like all of our state officers and legislators who have joined us this evening to please stand and accept our heartiest appreciation for your public service and effective support of Utah Valley University. With gratitude to everyone who gave voice and support to this initiative, we must especially laud the leaders of the Higher Education Appropriations Subcommittee. For almost an entire year, co-chairs Senator Steve Urquhart and Representative Keith Grover worked together to ensure that improving funding parity among Utah's public colleges and universities would serve as the top legislative priority for higher education this year. Then in the session, they relentlessly led the charge to ensure that this acute equity initiative, as it came to be called, was funded. In a moment, I will ask Senator Steve Urquhart, who joins us on the stand this evening, to come to the podium. Representative Keith Grover, unfortunately, is not here this evening, but only because he continues on as a faithful public servant, attending an important national conference connected to his legislative duties. We're also missing Speaker Becky Lockhart, who is unable to join us at this commencement, also due to a previous public commitment. Fortunately, she was able to attend a dinner earlier this evening where we were able to recognize her for her strong leadership in support of equity funding, especially in the critical closing budget negotiations. Finally, we must thank and recognize Governor Gary R. Herbert for making education one of the key points of his entire administration. But beyond that, we commend him for including, for, acute, for including funding for acute equity in his budget priorities and for enthusiastically supporting the final legislation that brought greater funding parity to Utah's higher education institutions. Would Governor Herbert and Senator Urquhart please join me at the podium while Chairman Lund, will you step forward and help present to me a special memento of thanks to these great leaders.
Thank you. I can tell by your responses uh, that you uh, see that the, the significance of, uh, of what we have accomplished uh, here tonight and uh, in honoring uh, our, serv our public servants in this way. Um, at this point, I can imagine, though, that some of you graduates and maybe even some of you parents are thinking, now, why is Holland telling all of this, this now? We're about to leave UVU. What does this have to do with my graduation and the launching forward of my post-UVU life? Well, it's true that unless you're staying to finish a four-year degree or a master's degree or something, you may not reap much immediate impact. But in the longer scheme of things, this has everything to do with what we celebrate tonight. You see, the fact of the matter is that your future and the future of this institution are, as of tonight, inextricably intertwined with one another. After you leave here this evening, the things you do will, for better or for worse, help shape the public opinion and future support of this institution. Whatever walk of life you choose, at some point, people will discover that you are a UVU grad and will unavoidably form thoughts about this institution based on your work and actions. In similar fashion, as UVU moves forward, the size, scope, and quality of the institution will inevitably shape, in some degree, the kinds of initial impressions and opportunities people extend to you once they know your academic pedigree. And so I make to you tonight one final institutional plea and promise. The plea is this. What you choose to do in this life, do it with all of the virtues of a true UVU education. Whether it's teaching that third grade class, or inserting that IV needle, or starting that business, or serving on that city council, or conducting that research experiment, or counseling that student, or raising that family, or penning that poetry, or repairing that chassis, or developing that software program, or conducting that symphony, or automating that assembly line, or any one of the myriad of magical and wonderful things that you can learn to do here at UVU. Do it with energy and persistence and thoroughness and creativity. So yes, I say some of this out of institutional self-interest, but I also say it because I've come to care so deeply about every UVU student enrolled. Take your life and decide this very night, if you've not already, to do something magnificent with it. Now by that, I do not mean that that something necessarily has to lead to wealth and fame. I simply mean do something that is genuinely productive in the world around you and do it with such thoughtful analysis, such clarity, such professionalism, such expertise, such ethical grounding, and such innovation that when people see you in action, they can't help but step back, catch their breath, and take note of the human excellence on display. Now, as you commit to doing that, I make you this promise. Every single day, the fine faculty and staff of this institution will be working as hard as they can to make this the most exceptional center of higher learning it can possibly be. A place of opportunity, rigor, beauty, exploration, enlightenment, expectation, inventiveness, access, and support. And as we do so, supplied and empowered by the talented and far-seeing efforts of the kind of public officials who have joined us tonight, we will only add luster to what this university has already become, a massive and magnificent mechanism of human transformation, a place known for taking the raw intellect and energies of a willing individual and amply equipping that individual for a life of powerful professional, educational, and personal success. And with that growing luster, that diploma you take in hand tomorrow, that emblem of all that you have worked for, saved for, and sacrificed for these last few years will only take on added value and meaning. Ladies and gentlemen, 
this evening, our futures meld together. Whether we intend it or not, what we do moving ahead on more separate paths, we cannot help but continue to do for each other in some important degree. And so tonight, let us affirm that our missions remain mutual, and let us affirm that we will seek to rise together on a path of shared destiny, a destiny that already has the world on alert for what the world, even beyond our valley, is starting to see, and what I can see perfectly tonight is that the newest and largest class in the history of Utah Valley University is ready, ready to make its mark. You are ready to go and do those things, those grand and important things with your life that will surely amplify the growing chorus of eager watchers everywhere wondering aloud how they too might become a mighty Wolverine. Students, congratulations and good luck. Um, at this point, uh, members of the UVU Board of Trustees will now present honorary degrees to Mr. Moore as well as Barbara Barrington Jones, Christopher Folk, and Noel Pikus Pace. Chairman of the Board of the Trustees, Stephen Lund, will you and Mr. Moore please come forward for the first presentation? On behalf of the UVU Board of Trustees, it is my pleasure to present Wes Moore with an honorary doctorate of public service. This honor is presented to Mr. Moore for his unwavering support of two vibrant and often underrepresented groups within our community, young adults and veterans. Despite early academic and behavioral struggles, he graduated as a commissioned officer from Valley Forge Military College, earned a degree from Johns Hopkins University, and became a Rhodes Scholar and a White House Fellow, and served as a paratrooper and a captain in the United States Army an inspiring example of rising above circumstances through individual choices that can change the course of life. His best-selling novel, The Other Wes Moore, tells that compelling story that he just described of the power of our choices, education, and support systems by comparing the fates of two young men who shared similar upbringings but who chose different paths. Mr. Moore's compelling argument that support systems have profound and lasting impact on one's life draws on his extensive experience as a leader in business, military, and youth advocacy. And his own life is a testament of the power that education, mentoring, and public service have in the lives of American youth. His stalwart advocacy of efforts, including extensive volunteer work in his local community, he serves the board of the Iraq Afghanistan Veterans of America and founded an organization called STAND through John Hopkins University, which works with Baltimore youth involved in the criminal justice system. He's indeed a true example of student success, which is, after all, our ultimate goal here at UVU. Therefore, the Board of Trustees of Utah Valley University hereby confer upon Wes Moore the honorary doctor, degree of Doctor of Public Service, realized this first day of May 2014 here in Orem, Utah. Congratulations, Wes. It's a privilege to have you with us. I also extend my congratulations to you, Wes. We admire you and thank you for your passion. We'll now honor Barbara Barrington Jones with an honorary doctorate of fine arts and humanities.
On behalf of the UVU Board of Trustees, I am happy to present Barbara Barrington Jones with an honorary doctorate of fine arts and humanities. This honor is presented to Mrs. Barrington Jones for her compassion and dedication to helping girls and women of all ages realize their full potential and lead more fulfilling and productive lives. Using her varied background as a motivational speaker, fashion designer, author, image consultant, and philanthropist, Mrs. Barrington Jones is a passionate advocate and supporter of education particularly access to arts education, as evidenced by her support of Ballet West's I Can Do program, which gives children the opportunity to experience dance firsthand. She has for provided forward-thinking wisdom and support as an integral member of our foundation board and has helped support UVU's current and future needs as a vital component of our community. With heartfelt generosity, she has supported local organizations, including the Museum of Natural Curiosity at Thanksgiving Point and UVU's We Care Center, which has benefited many of you students. She sustains and reinforces traditional and interdisciplinary learning and improves access to education for underrepresented and vulnerable groups. Mrs. Barrington Jones truly has a mind for service and a heart for the world. The power of her humanitarian and motivational speaking efforts are felt across nations. She has traveled to every state in the U.S., has spoken in countless countries, funded four preschools in Africa, and supports orphanages in China and Cambodia. Therefore, the Board of Trustees of Utah Valley University hereby confers upon Barbara Barrington Jones the Honorary Doctorate of Fine Arts and Humanities realized this first day of May 2014 in Orem, Utah. Many thanks, Barbara, for your service and commitment. Barbara, we're indeed proud of you and count you as one of our most ardent supporters. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now award an honorary doctorate of the university to a truly stellar alumnus, Christopher Folk. <laughs> On behalf of the UVU Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present Christopher Folt with an honorary doctorate of the university. Mr. Folt recently returned from Sochi, Russia, where he and the other members of the famed four-man night train bobsled team won a bronze medal at the 2014 Winter Olympics. An inspiring example of diligence despite setbacks and heart-wrenching disappointments, he has proven himself willing and determined to work hard, press forward, and reach for his goals without pursuing for himself any glory. Long before his Olympic aspirations were realized, he was a star athlete at UVU. Displaying both, that's right. <laughs> displaying both his leadership skills and his athletic acumen as he served as a track and field team captain for two years. And he set, he set six school records. Though he graduated with a bachelor's degree in business management, Mr. Folt was dedicated to more than athletics and academics. He also completed ROTC and commissioned into the Army as a second lieutenant in the military intelligent branch. Now a member of the Army's world-class athletic program, he served honorably in Iraq for a year following the 2010 Olympics and returns to regular Army service this month. We are proud to call Mr. Fote one of our own, a true example of the university to the world through his Olympic endeavors and his military service. Therefore, 
the Board of Trustees of Utah Valley University hereby confers upon Christopher Fault the honorary degree of Doctorate of the University realized the first day of May 2014 in Orem, Utah. Thank you, Chris, for your example of perseverance and dedication. Congratulations, Chris. It's really a delight to have you here and share in uh, your victories, uh, both in the Olympics and here tonight. Thank you. Uh, we'll now award an honorary doctorate of the university to Noel Picus Pace, who also recently represented the United States uh, and is a proud alumna of our university uh, of the, at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. On behalf of the UVU Board of Trustees, I am honored to present Noel Pikus Pace with an honorary doctorate of the university. Mrs. Pikus Pace is a true example of passion and perseverance, having officially become an Olympic silver medalist this February after 13 years of competing professionally in the sport. She endured severe physical and emotional challenges during the devastating leg injury that kept her from competing in the 2006 Olympics with poise and dignity. In 2005, she became the first U.S. woman ever to win the overall World Cup title in the skeleton, claimed the world champion's title by the largest margin in the history of the sport in 2006, and placed fourth in the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver. Despite these accolades and many others, including the 28 national and international medals she won during the last season alone. She has remained grounded in her goals and beliefs. She pursued a master's degree while training, started a successful business, and continued to put her family first throughout it all. An ardent supporter of the university and a shining representative of UVU and her community to the world, Mrs. Pikus Pace inspires, uplifts, with her unfailing optimism and dedication. Therefore, the Board of Trustees of Utah Valley University hereby confers upon Noel Pikus Pace the honorary degree of Doctorate of the University, realized this first day of May 2014 in Orem, Utah. I am honored to bestow this degree on Noel, one of our greatest accomplishments. Noelle is one of the greatest uh, UVU uh, champions. We thank her for her uh, unwavering support for uh, all that she's done for this institution. Well, once again, on behalf of the university and the Board of Trustees, we are honored to welcome these outstanding individuals as honorary degree holders at UVU. At last, it is now time for the main and highest purpose of tonight's proceedings, the, the presentation of student candidates for degrees first for master's degree graduates, then for undergraduates. Ian Wilson, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, will now join me and present the candidates for graduation. I invite the candidates for Master of Business Administration, Master of Education, and Master of Nursing degrees to please rise. 
Candidates, please remain standing as you are joined by the undergraduates. Candidates for Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Associate of Science, Associate of Arts and Associate of Applied Science degrees, diplomas and certificates of completion, please stand. President Holland, on behalf of the faculty, I present the candidates for Master, Bachelor and Associate degrees, diplomas and certificates. These candidates have completed the requirements for these degrees, diplomas and certificates, and the faculty has approved their candidacy pursuant to the final completion of all the requirements. President, I now recommend that the Master, Bachelor, associate degrees, diplomas, and certificates be awarded them. Candidates, you have fulfilled all the requirements for the appropriate master's degree, bachelor's degree, associate's degree, diploma, or certificate, and have been recommended by the faculty for graduation. By the virtue of the authority vested in the Utah State Board of Regents and delegated by them to me, I hereby confer upon you the appropriate degree, diploma, or certificate. You may now move your tassels from the right to the left side of your mortar board to indicate your graduation from Utah Valley University. While you graduates are still standing, I think this would be a marvelous opportunity for you to take to acknowledge your families and friends who are here with you with a round of applause for them, for their support and encouragement during your efforts. Class of 2014, please be seated. If necessary, you're also invited to move out of your parents' basement at this time. <laughs> Congratulations on a job well done, and honors rightly deserved. To all of our guests this evening, I want to again extend gratitude for gathering for this singular celebration. This will be a night to remember fondly for all of these outstanding Wolverines. Graduates, may it also serve as a continuing source of inspiration and direction en route to bright futures and remarkable contributions, which are well within your grasp. In closing, we ask that the graduates and audience remain seated as our platform guests exit the stage and begin the recessional. We invite the graduates to then join the recessional and ask the audience to please remain seated until all graduates have left the arena floor. Thank you for sharing this important moment with us tonight.